Hello and welcome to our December live broadcast from Discipleship Ministries here in Nashville. I'm Junius Dotson, your General Secretary. Y'all know what time it is? I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's Christmas time. This is undoubtedly one of my favorite times of the year and I'm in a Christmas spirit. This is the time of the year where we celebrate the birth of Christ. We rehearse the Christmas story. We celebrate the arrival of God into human form, the incarnation, God Emmanuel, God with us. It's also a time we know that our theological task during this season of Advent uh, is to remind us that not simply that Jesus was born in a manger in a little town called Bethlehem, but it is also to help us to remember and to eagerly anticipate his second return to earth. And so then the essence of our ministry is this. We've got good news. We've got great news. In fact, it is the best news in the world. People love to hear good news. In point of fact, during this season, it's one of the few times that people take the initiative in seeking out a place to worship. And so this is an opportune time for churches to be intentional about engaging and connecting with this community. So in the midst of all of the planning, the Christmas Eve services, children's plays, special music productions, Christmas caroling, Christmas ministry team gatherings, Christmas breakfast, Christmas lunches, Christmas dinners, and the list goes on and on. Hey, don't forget to pause, to develop an intentional plan to connect with your community. So let's go to the balcony and let's reflect on Christmas services from a strategic point of view. Very quickly, I would like to invite you to consider three very practical ways to connect with your community during this season. Here's number one, invite. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? But I have actually coached a lot of churches who take the position that, hey, we don't have to do any intentional outreach during this season because people are going to just show up. Well, in reality, that fact should spur us on to be even more intentional in our efforts to engage the community because people are more receptive to our invitations during this season. In other words, people are looking for a place to worship. Why not share with them that your church will welcome them? So maximize your evangelism effort. Consider a cost effective invite card that your members can share with people they want to personally invite to church. Studies show that 90% of all persons who attend a church for the first time come because somebody personally invited them. I want you to think about that for a second. So there are people in our sphere of influence who are just waiting for a personal invitation. And so why not give people a tool that they can use, something that they can put in their hand and use to invite a person or a family member or a friend or a coworker to worship on Christmas. Consider a direct mail, uh, sending a direct mail to your community. Consider advertising in the local newspaper. So many ways to be intentional about inviting. Now to help us model this in a very practical way, our sister agency, United Methodist Communications, is helping our church take to the streets in nine major cities with a warm invitation and a hot cup of cocoa. Now, I love this idea. It's great, it's simple. What I love about it is that it can be replicated anywhere. For example, Dallas's St. Paul United Methodist Church, well, they're gonna deploy about a dozen of its members to Clyde Warren Park this Sunday from one to three in order to offer a little Christmas cheer warmth with a complimentary cup of hot cocoa. Uh, lead Pastor Richie Butler tells me that this type of national outreach effort from United Methodist Communications dovetails with one of the key strengths of his congregation, to meet and greet people. Efforts like these are creative, they are out of the box, and they position our denomination and they can position your church as relevant to so many when we go beyond the four walls. And remember what I've always said, that relation to discipleship begins with relationship, that we cannot disciple people with whom we're not in relationship with. So what a great opportunity just to, to begin the relationship by a warm greeting with a warm cup of cocoa and to say, hey, I don't know what you're doing for Christmas, but we certainly want to invite you to come be a part of our worshiping community. 
The idea here is to be actively engaged with people during this season. So let's learn from each other. If your church is doing something creative to engage and invite people to church for Christmas, please take a moment and post a comment on this video or on the Disciple Minist Discipleship Ministries Facebook page. It's an opportunity for us to learn best ideas and creative practices from one another. Hey, if you're just joining us, I'm Junius Dotson, and we're talking about three very practical ways to connect with your community at Christmas. If you like what you're hearing today, share it. Let's, let's multiply the impact of learning. Hit the share button and send it to a few of your friends. Here's number two, plan a dynamic worship experience. Yes, people will show up, but your church now has the opportunity to demonstrate the spirit of excellence. The way you plan, preach, make music selections, the, the transitions in worship, all of these are so very important uh, to our worship experience to be dynamic and inspirational and transformational. So plan worship with an expectation that new people will be joining you in worship. I would submit to you that this is a day you need to be at your best and planning with excellence will actually allow you to be totally reliant and dependent on God during the worship experience. Here's the principle. The more you plan, the freer you are in worship. The more you plan, the more comfortable your worship leaders are in worship. The opposite is also true. If you slack in your planning, it is painfully obvious to those who are in attendance. Now, I'm grateful that here at Discipleship Ministries, we can help you plan uh, an excellent service of worship. If you visit our website, umcdiscipleship.org, you're going to find worship helps, music suggestions, preaching ideas, even graphics, uh, and, and a team of people who are ready uh, to assist you in planning a dynamic service of worship. So quickly, number one, invite, 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 invite. Number two, Plan a dynamic, a winsome worship experience. Here's number three, plan for follow-up. Have a follow-up plan in place to invite new and returning guests into your church family. So when people are there, you have to remember to offer a warm welcome to guests and, and also you have to have a plan to get important information that will allow you to follow up. So during the worship experience, share concrete and practical ways that your church helps people on their spiritual journey. Uh, I've always phrased it like this. Uh, in the midst of a worship experience, we'll simply say, hey, here are the ways you can get connected to our church family this week. Or here are the ways you can grow forth your life spiritually. Or hey, don't forget to plan to join us on the first Sunday of the new year as we begin a new message series that, and I'll share the new message series and then talk about the ways that this series will be relevant to people's lives and how this series will be life changing and, and share some real practical ideas with them. So and within 48 hours of that service, send a personal handwritten note, not a form letter, a personal handwritten note thanking people for attending and inviting them to come back to your church. So remember that regardless of how good the music is, how great the sermon is, a person must be welcomed into your church in a friendly and helpful way or the first impression will be a negative one. And I always say it like this, that evangelism belongs to the whole church, not a committee. The spirit of hospitality, well, that belongs to the whole church, not a committee. Hospitality and welcoming people who come through your doors belongs to the whole church, not to the ushers, not simply to the greeters or the parking lot attendants, but to everyone. So work hard at creating an environment that is welcoming so that when people come, uh, they will have a great experience. I can tell you from my own personal experience uh, in this season of visiting churches that the thing that has the most impact on me is how I feel when I first walk through the door. So quickly to review, invite, invite, invite. Secondly, plan a very dynamic service of worship that's inspirational, that's transformational, uh, that invites people to continue to be a part of your worship experience. And then thirdly, please don't forget to have a plan to follow up. 
Hey, it's been a pleasure sharing with you today. I look forward uh, to speaking with you uh, in January uh, from all of us here at Discipleship Ministries. Want to say to you, have a blessed Christmas. I am going to be praying for you and for every church across our country uh, as they gather together to share the good news of Jesus the Christ. God bless you. This has been a production of Discipleship Ministries, an agency of the United Methodist Church. Visit us online at umcdiscipleship.org.